Three quarters of Americans believe that President Biden is too old to govern effectively. President Trump faces multiple civil and criminal trials. Both of them have favorability ratings that are deep in negative territory. That's what two-party politics has given us. And that's why we need to pry loose from the hammerlock of the corrupt powers in Washington, D.C. and make this nation ours again. But there's a sacrifice that everyone, including myself, have to make. And that's the addiction to taking sides. Six months ago, I thought that an open border was a humanitarian policy and that if you were for sealing the border, it meant that you were probably a xenophobe and maybe a racist. I was wrong. How did I learn I was wrong? My views changed as I spoke to Border Patrol officers, to local officials, to local sheriffs, to aid workers, and to the migrants themselves. I saw that no one party has a monopoly on wisdom, and none of the simplistic narratives actually contain the whole truth. My promise to you as president is that I'm going to do this on every issue. I'm going to listen to the stakeholders from every side and beyond any side. I'm going to uphold my moral convictions, of course, absolutely. But I'll hold my own opinions lightly. I'll look at the evidence and the arguments, and I'll choose not the easy path, not the established path, but the right path. If you like this video and you want to learn more about me and the movement that we're building, please go to Kennedy24.com. Question for you. What is the difference between uh, winning a race and just disrupting the race? The rap against third-party candidates has always been they really don't get anywhere. They might actually influence the vote for whoever wins, but never themselves. But history suggests otherwise. Ross Perot, for a while, even when he dropped out of the race and returned to the race in 1992, did finish getting 19% of the vote. Some say he tipped it to Bill Clinton. We really don't know for sure in that particular battle. But we do know that Robert F. Kennedy Jr. right now, I think I said 22%. He's actually polling at 24% when pitted against Donald Trump. Is at 29% and Joe Biden is at 30%. Now, the sands shift on this all the time. Uh, but it isn't out of, of the theoretical possibility that, that in, in such a battle, and if he is in the debates... Uh, that he could comport himself enough to win the whole thing. Teddy Roosevelt came awfully close when he went against his former vice president, think about it, got more votes than William Howard Taft back then. Woodrow Wilson skated in in the meantime. That was then what happens now. Tony Lyons, the American Values 2024 co-chair. What do you think of that, Tony, the possibility uh, of Robert F. Kennedy Jr. pulling it off as a third-party candidate? I think that the numbers really point to Bobby Kennedy having a very strong chance of becoming president. I mean, these new numbers are really striking in that, you know, two weeks back, Bobby Kennedy was beating both Biden and Trump in, you know, all voters under 35. Now, you know, two weeks later, he's beating both of them in all voters under 45. Hmm. And those are the types of people who have been hearing him because he doesn't really get on the mainstream media that much. He's mostly been on all of the gigantic podcasts, and that's where people 45 and younger get their news. So he is speaking to the things that matter to them, and he's convincing them that the things that they've heard about him are lies, and that when they hear his real story, they want him to be their president because they see these two characters on both sides, Biden and Trump, and they don't trust them, and they don't want them to be their president. Well, I don't know what my email can glean, uh, Tony, but I've had Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on a number of times. And every time I do, particularly the first time he appeared with me on Fox, his first Fox appearance at the time, uh, generated more email than I've gotten on all the other presidential candidates I've talked to since even before, combined, C combined. So I don't know what that means. I don't know what that speaks of the audience and the independents and many people who said, I like this guy. But I'm wondering in, in a very bifurcated race and, and where the, the two major candidates, for whatever reason, are so polarizing, uh, you know, the rap has always been, well, where else is a Republican going to go? These are the two choices. Where else is a Democrat going to go? These are the two choices. 
But on ballots, assuming Robert F. Kennedy Jr., no small possibility here, um, can get on all 50 state ballots, they do have an option, right? Yeah, so they do have an option, and what they have is a candidate who's willing to tell them the truth, who, you know, who isn't doing this for more money, for more power. He has no agenda other than to do what's right for the people of this country. So, he, you know, he would come into power not working for a dozen of the largest corporations in the country. He would be coming in to the presidency as somebody who wants to rearrange the government so that it works for people all around the country. So he would get us out of these foreign wars. He would work hard to make a possible future for young people that they can be hopeful you know, with, where they really believe that they have a government who's fighting for them. And so, you know, the, the younger people who've been hearing his message, they're not slaves to the corporate media. You know, they watch podcasts. Yeah. They're, they're not fooled by the lies that they've heard. So Bobby Kennedy is a sincere, you know, really honest guy who has no agenda other than writing this, you know, separated country, healing the divide right. in this country and making this a country we can all be proud of once again. All right. Now, obviously, you, you like him very much, uh, but there are a lot of issues that could come out. He's had some pretty extreme positions, but uh, to your point, he should be heard. Uh, if you don't like what he's saying, if you don't like some of those views, they're not your cup of tea, have it out and let, let, let's hear him. But he would be an equal in a race of, of the three very prominent candidates. So it, it deserves watching. Tony Lyons, thank you very much. I'm trying to curb my enthusiasm for this next segment. That's because I'm about to speak to Larry David's TV ex-wife, Cheryl Hines, or as she's known off-screen, Mrs. RFK Jr. She's here because her real-life husband could be poised to turn our two-party political system on its head. First, let me explain. I've noted already today how former President Trump is beating President Biden in five out of six battleground states in a hypothetical matchup for the 2024 presidential race. That's the Times Siena College poll. Only 2% of registered voters in that poll said they would support another ill-defined candidate. But if Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s name is specifically added to that ballot as a third option, then nearly a quarter of voters said they would choose him over Trump or Biden, RFK Jr., polling between 22 and 26 percent of support among swing state voters in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona, and Georgia. Among Gen Z and millennial voters, he's beating both Biden and Trump. And among independents in those battleground states, RFK showing a comfortable lead with 39 percent to Biden's 28 and to Trump's 25. So RFK Jr.'s campaign if they're able to mobilize these young, independent, and swing voters, we might see a repeat of the 68 presidential race rather than the 2020 race. I refer to when independent presidential candidate George Wallace beat both the Republican and Democratic nominee in five states. But of course, ballot access is a major hurdle for independent candidates, not to mention motivating enough voters to turn out. Larry David himself once covered this subject on Curb. Hey. Can I ask you a personal question? What? Who are you voting for? Raymond Schneider. You're voting for Raymond Schneider? Yeah. Hmm. I have a proposition for you. I'm voting for Mayu. We kind of cancel each other out. You know, this line, of, why don't we get the hell out of here? I like it. Huh? Yeah? yeah? Beautiful. Let's go. Cheryl Hines joins me now. She's an Emmy-nominated actress, director, producer, philanthropist, comedian, businesswoman, and wife of presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Cheryl, great to have you here. You've obviously got tons on your own plate. How active a role are you playing in this campaign? Um, I would say pretty active. <laughs> I am, uh, you know, definitely uh, Bobby and I spend a lot of time talking about issues and how, what people need and how we're hearing from them and going around the country and, you know, at the end of the day, we say, oh, what I'm hearing is people are having a hard time paying their bills. They feel like Democrats and Republicans aren't paying attention to them. So, uh, so we, we have a lot of really good discussions. I covered the announcement in Philadelphia when Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced that now he's taken a shot as an independent. You introduced him. Here's a snippet of that. 
one thing I know about Bobby is if he hears that can't be done or you can't do it, <laughs> it only sparks a fire in him and it makes him fight harder. So I'm here to tell you that Bobby is ready to fight for you guys. Are you ready for him to fight for you? Curb is famously unscripted. Has that prepared you for the role of being a politician's <laughs> wife? <laughs> it definitely has helped. I mean, as you can imagine, it, it, it's very unpredictable. Everything that you do day to day on the campaign trail, you don't know who you're gonna meet. You don't know, you know, where you're going until you get there. So it's been helpful. Yeah, it's been helpful. <laughs> Have you allowed yourself to think what it would be like to be first lady of the United States? You know that we have come to expect first ladies to have passion projects, Laura Bush reading, Michelle Obama, I think of obesity and, and the garden, Jill Biden, I think of education. What, what would be Cheryl Hines as first lady passion project? Well, I've always been passionate about public schools. So I've done a lot of work in different schools around the country, um, going in and activating the community to get involved in that school. We've gone, you know, we started in Compton. We did several schools there. We went to Detroit and Nashville and, and Las Vegas. And, um, and it's very inspiring to me because first of all, we need to be doing better for our kids and for the teachers. Um, but just to see the community coming together and they actually want to help, they want to do something. And uh, a lot of times, you know, of course they don't have the resources, um, but then if you organize enough people, it's, it's really surprising and inspiring how many parents come out, even the teachers would come out and paint their classrooms and clean the school and plant flowers and, and get other businesses to partner with them to donate um, computers and things that the school really needs. I mean, there, there are some really underserved schools out there and I don't think it's fair to our kids and, and to the fact that- How do your- how do your politics align with his? I mean, there was there was quite a, a, a story made of the fact that you distanced yourself from Bobby's comments when he invoked Anne Frank at a Vax mandate rally. You tweeted, I, I, I'll put it up on the screen. You said, hey, you know, my politics, there it is. My husband's opinions are not a reflection of my own. While we love each other, we differ on many current issues. I guess that's typical of, of a lot of relationships and spouses, but lay it out for us. Like, where's yeah. the commonality and where's the divide? We have 99% in common. <laughs> I am a more, um, I, I get more concerned about people's feelings, I suppose. So during that time, it was very heated. It was heated with the vaccines and the masks. And I I come from a place of, if it makes people feel better, just wear the mask. It's not gonna hurt you. And Bobby comes from a place, you know, he's an attorney. <laughs> he wants to see the facts. He wants to know, he wants to know why we're doing this and is it safe and is it okay? Um, so that at that point in time, it was, it was very heated. Um, so that's where that was coming from. But you know, Bobby is pro-choice. He's um, very concerned about the middle America, about working class people and making sure that they have what they need and that they can get houses and that they can keep their jobs. And, um, and, I, and he's, you know, wants to keep the peace. So I am 100% with him on all of that. There was a story in Variety, speaking of keeping the peace, that said that, we'll put that on the screen as well, that there was actual contemplation or an offer that he made to you, like, hey, if we need to separate just for the sake of offering you some protection, I'm willing to do it. Was that a true story? Tell us about it. Yes, that's a true story. Well, uh, you know, Bobby is a very caring person, and he could see that what he was doing, you know, being out there on the front line was um, difficult for me. 
because I, I was hearing it from both sides during that time. The vaccines, people really liked them, people really disliked them, and I was getting it from both sides. And, and at some point, and he, you know, he did not want to see me go through that. And he said, maybe we should just, I could, we could separate. And I said, no, that's Cheryl, not Cheryl, how answer. concerned, how concerned are you for the obvious reasons? His name is Kennedy. He's running for president about his personal safety. I, I know the audience probably knows that you want him to have secret service protection that has not been afforded. How worried are you? And why do you think he hasn't been given secret service protection? I'm very, very concerned um, because of his family's history, um, because of the, the state of the world right now. It's, a, it's scary. And um, it's hard to, for me to say why he hasn't been um, given Secret Service because Barack Obama got Secret Service 551 days out. Um, Teddy Kennedy received Secret Service 441 days out. So it's, I'm not sure why, why Bobby is being denied. I mean, it well, seems I know like it's from, political. From reading yeah. in, I know the explanation that's offered by, from the administration is that one has to attain major candidate status. If the Times, if the New York Times and Siena College polls that I've shown the audience are accurate, I would think that someone who's in the 20s is there. You reference mm -hmm. President Obama. That was a, quote, unique circumstance because he was African-American and was obviously a major party candidate. And there were a lot of threats. And in the case of Teddy, that was Jimmy Carter, who understood more than a year out, hey, he's a Kennedy. Um, right. And, and you also, also had an incident where somebody was on your property, right? That's right. Yes, there have been several incidents. Yes, I was actually home during that time, and I saw it was you know it's very scary, and so it it um, it does seem like there are other reasons that that Bobby is not getting Secret Service because just like you said, if he does get Secret Service, then that's admitting that yes, he's a viable candidate, and I don't think. Um, I don't think the administration wants to admit that yet, which is, it's, it's really unfortunate. It's uh, ridiculous. And as soon as he becomes president, he appoints his younger brother, Bobby, as U.S. Attorney General, your dad. Yeah, yeah because my uncle had been on the Rackets Committee hmm. in the United States Senate. He had been in the Senate before he came to, before he became president. And my father was chief counsel of the Rackets Committee. It was like a daring move for Democrats because organized crime had infiltrated organized labor right. and particularly the Teamsters Union, but some of the other unions. Yeah. And they did it anyway. But my father really felt that it was the he at that time, he felt like it was the gravest threat to American democracy because the mafia had infiltrated all of these institutions that were part of key to our democracy, including the labor unions, but also the judiciary. They controlled a lot of judges. They, uh, they owned a lot of Congress people. And Israel is critical. And the reason it's critical is because it's a bulwark for us in the Mideast. It's almost like having an aircraft carrier in the Mideast. It's our oldest ally. It's been our ally for 75 years. Um, it has been an incredible ally for us in terms of the technology, the exchange. And, you know, in building the Iron Dome, which we paid a lot for, has also taught us enormously about how to defend ourselves at home for missiles. So those military expenditures um, are, are, you know, are, are all going, 75% of it goes to U.S. companies under the agreement, under the MOU. But... If you look at what's happening in the Mideast now, Iran is now um, a, the closest allies to Iran are Russia and China. Um, BRICS, Saudi Arabia is now uh, joining BRICS. So those countries will control 90% of the oil in, our, in the world. If Israel disappears, the vacuum in the Mideast 
which is, you know, Israel is our ambassador, it's our presence, it's our beachhead in the Mideast. And it gives, us, um, it gives us ears and eyes in the Mideast, it gives us intelligence, it gives us the capacity to, um, uh, to, to, to influence affairs in the Mideast. If Israel disappeared, Russia and China would be controlling the Mideast, and they control 90% of the world's oil supply, and that would be cataclysmic for U.S. national security. So that's the answer I'm going to give you. But I did not know this. Uh, last week, somebody tried to break into Kennedy's house in Los Angeles. And in September, uh, somebody impersonating a U.S. marshal showed up at one of his rallies. So the Kennedy people have asked for uh, Secret Service protection and sent 11 pages to the Secret Service of the reasons why. And Biden turned them down through the Homeland Security Department. I don't, that's inexplicable. If I'm president, why wouldn't I give RFK Jr. with the legacy of his family Secret Service protection when he can document that he has some problems? Why, now we asked the Biden administration, it's gobbledygook. All right, well, uh, you know, at this time, not warranted. What's going on? I, I don't know. I'll find out. But I don't know. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today. RFK Jr. may have left the Democratic Party, but he's still having a pretty significant impact on Democratic candidate polls, especially uh, President Joe Biden's poll numbers. As Breaking, Co uh, Breaking Point's co-host Sagar and Jetty posted, quote, it's one thing to ignore Robert Kennedy Jr. in a Democratic primary, but it is a whole other to ignore him when he is shaping up to be the most formidable third party candidate in more than a century. According to a recent New York Times Siena College poll, RFK Jr. is raking in as much as 25 percent support in some key battleground states like Michigan and Georgia. Now, many argue the spoiler candidate should be allowed to participate in presidential debates, uh, especially if he gets ballot access while polling this high. If he spoils the race, so be it. They can try to uh, other candidates can talk about the issues that mattered him in order to compete for those votes as well. But the Lincoln Project, a centrist PAC, decried Fox News' coverage of RFK Jr., Cornell West, and Dean Phillips' campaigns, accusing them of being part of the, quote, Trump coalition, those candidates. Over the proofs in the pudding, a new 2024 poll out of Iowa shows Trump leading 41 percent, Biden at 35 percent, and independent RFK Jr. and Cornell West earning 16 and 4 percent, respectively, for a total of 20% of the vote. So RFK Jr.'s current poll numbers um, are very significant, um, and they're reminiscent of a kind of, actually, Ross Perot sort of three-way race. Um, that, that's, a, that's a significant amount of support. That's you know above the kind of baseline support that third parties are usually getting somewhere between like one and 5% um, in the polls, and then you know, one percent at the end of the day. The Libertarian Party did a little bit, a little bit better than that in um, in uh, 2016, I believe. So substantially better than that, but still, you know, single-digit results. Um, RFK Jr. is slated to have an effect. Yeah. So the Lincoln Project is a group of never Trump Republicans that have allied themselves with the Democratic Party and who right. are frustrated forever and always by third party efforts because they're concerned about a spoiler effect that would put Trump back in office. What's interesting is that polls are sort of mixed about who RFK Jr. has a negative effect on. It, what we saw when he was a Democrat seemed to be that the logic was because he was running in the Democratic Party, by default, he was going to be taking uh, votes away from uh, Joe Biden in the primary. Obviously, Donald Trump isn't competing in the Democratic primary. So there seemed to be some advantage to conservative outlets and kind of independents to give him a platform, buoy him, and laud the things about his platform that they also agree with. Now that he's running as an independent, I think you've seen a little bit of the shift. Um, and 
wherein, because he does seem to be um, pulling a lot of voters who are disaffected from both parties, potentially a threat, you're not seeing him get the same amount of uh, accolades. I do think that his own behavior has played a role in this. Uh, his stance on Israel and his stance on some of the free speech issues relating to Israel haven't helped him very much. Uh, but I also think a, a lot of it is that the media attention, the character of the media attention that he used to get from the right has changed. Yeah, the, the Lincoln Project, I would have even sterner criticism of them. Um, you know, they claim to be people trying to rescue the Republican Party mm -hmm. for Donald Trump. I would say they're basically just operating as Democrats and, in fact, are kind of grifting people into thinking that they're actually Republicans. They're, you know, Joy Reid's favorite Republican. They're on MSNBC a lot. Mm -hmm. um, they got caught. They did—do you remember that stunt? Like, they, they, they were very anti-Glenn Youngkin. You know, they say they're— just focused on the good of the Republican Party and getting rid of Trump, but they they went hard after Glenn Youngkin. They did that tiki torch stunt. Do you remember that? They oh, tried baby. to make it look like there were racist people supporting Youngkin, but that would like that was their. It was a it was a whole embarrassing thing. Actually, I did think I did a radar on it a long time ago. Mm. If you want to Google that, <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. So of course they're going to disparage anything that threat that they perceive is threatening um, Joe Biden now. It's an open question at this point whether RFK Jr.'s independent candidacy is hurting Joe Biden more, Donald Trump more, or whether, I mean, and I don't think that matters. Again, I think that's fine for him to eat into support. That's how it works. You do, no one is owed your vote. You don't have to, you shouldn't be thinking, oh, well, I just have to vote for the least bad candidate. No, you should vote for the candidate you like the best. If if other uh, if the other candidates did a better job speaking to the issues that RK Jr. represents, he wouldn't have this um, this large um, faction behind him. But uh, it, it is clear, I think, that uh, there are a lot of conservatives who are interested in him. Um, a lot of independents, a lot of disaffected people, um, people who are dissatisfied with both major parties, and uh, and he has a very you know interesting coalition. He's probably winning votes for people who are not going to vote for either the other well, two so anyway. Well, so a Quinnipiac poll that was released a, a week ago showed um, that, and again in this matchup, Biden is narrowly ahead of Trump by one point. This was a week ago, within the margin of error in a head-to-head -head matchup. If Kennedy was not involved. If Kennedy were involved in a three-way race, Biden is ahead with 39 percent to 36 percent. Right. So he increases his uh, margin uh, over Donald Trump. That is, I think, why we've seen this big turn of events. It, that puts the Lincoln Project in a, in a weird situation, because they are arguing against people like RFK Jr., even though by some indication he would actually help them in their goal of defeating Donald Trump. But I think the real takeaway is that nobody really knows, and they would prefer a world where uh, RFK Jr. is not continuing to be ascendant. And not just Robert uh, F. F. Kennedy Jr., by the way, is in the mix as an independent. Colonel West has now left the Green Party, and it's mm. worth looking a little bit about uh, what's going on with these other candidates. Now, independent candidate Colonel West took a jab at Biden for his low standing in the polls, posting on X, formerly Twitter, quote, POTUS doesn't need me to spoil his reelection bid. His milk toast, neoliberal agenda leading us to war, climate calamity, and more poverty is doing that for him. It's time to break the derelict duopoly into tiny little pieces and engender a new U.S. polity rooted in truth, justice, and love. The ma mainstream media also appeared to parrot the White House Kareem Jean-Pierre's comments writing off the Biden's poll numbers. MSNBC contributor Dr. Jason Johnson took to X writing, quote, the recent New York Times Siena poll, only bad news for Biden if the presidential election were tomorrow, but it's not, so he's fine. We're seeing a lot of that, and I can't imagine a more <coughs> open Excuse expression me. of indifference to voters' frustration than saying, they'll be over in a year. But that's what the Democratic Party has been doing for years now, is treat every criticism as just a political matter, nothing substantive, nothing that needs to be changed, nothing that needs to be addressed. The Democratic Party says the party doesn't need to change, the candidates don't need to change, the polity needs to change. Mm -hmm. They couldn't possibly know what they want. That's what you say when you can't change or you won't change. Or you you're won't unwilling change. to change. You're unwilling to change. And for what it's worth, you, what you've seen on the Republican side of the aisle is that the um, uh, insurgent Tea Party, uh, Freedom Caucus, whatever you want to call them, faction of the party, has had the effect of dragging the party to the right. And what it's interesting to look at how they've affected the um, the House differently than the Senate. You see, because of the existence of that faction in the House, there is a real appetite for voting down Joe Biden's 
funding efforts for Ukraine and uh, Israel in a way that you do not see among Republican senators. So you have a real world example of what it would mean for there to be an insurgent left, for there to be a Democratic Party that for one reason or another was forced to actually say, hey, this is where the electorate is, let's move to them. But that hasn't been the case. And I think that the reason is because both parties are captured by the same um, financial interest and drive in the same direction, especially on these big issues like war. We'll have more rising right after this. New poll shows RFK Jr. beating Trump and Biden among young Americans in swing states. 34% of registered voters between 18 and 29 are behind Kennedy for president. A new poll published Tuesday shows independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has more support among young Americans in swing states than both the GOP frontrunner and incumbent president. The New York Times and Siena College published a poll showing that Kennedy has more support among Americans under 45 in critical battleground states over both Presidents Trump and Biden. According to the poll, 34 percent of registered voters between 18 and 29 are behind Kennedy for president. Comparatively, Trump, the GOP frontrunner, only carries 29 percent of that age range while Biden, the Democratic nominee, carries just 30 percent. Among the 30 to 44 age group, carries 31 percent of support compared to Biden and Trump's matching 30s. However, Kennedy is trailing behind the two presidents in the other age groups, with the independent candidate's lowest numbers coming from registered voters aged 45 and above. At 20 percent support, Kennedy is heavily behind Trump and Biden in the 45 to 64 age group, who carry 41 percent and 31 percent, respectively. Among registered voters aged 65 and up, Kennedy only carries 17 percent of the people polled, while Trump took 37 percent and Biden took 39 percent. Poll illustrates Kennedy's growing popularity with young Americans as he seeks the White House in an independent bid against Biden. Kennedy announced last month that he would stop campaigning as a Democrat and instead make an independent run for the White House. Something is stirring in us, saying it doesn't have to be this way, Kennedy said, adding that Americans are ready to reclaim their freedom and independence. I'm here to declare myself an independent candidate for President of the United States, Kennedy continued. But that's not all. I'm here to join you and make a new declaration of independence for our entire nation, Kennedy said. We declare independence from the corporations that have hijacked our government. Kennedy also said that he and the crowd assembled declared independence from both political parties as well as the mercenary media. Kennedy called for unity in the country and said that politicians getting all of us to hate each other is all a part of their scam. Kennedy was initially running as a Democrat in an intraparty challenge to Biden, but the DNC maintained support for the incumbent president and reiterated that they would not schedule primary debates. 